everyone, it's Alex from Risk Academy and today I wanted to talk about integrating risk management or risk analysis into investment decision making and this is a step-by-step -step guide how you would do it. Step number one, find the Excel model that supports the investment proposal. Not the PowerPoint presentation, not the Word document that describes what a wonderful investment that is, um, but find the actual Excel where the cash flows, the NPVs, the IRRs, whatever the decision making criteria is actually calculated. So that's step number one. Find that Excel file. Step number two. Understand and cleanse the file. Unless the Excel model for that investment proposal has been prepared by either an external consultant or somebody with consulting experience, chances are the calculations, the formulas, the assumptions, they may not be nicely color-coded, grouped in different tabs. The structure of the model may not be blindly obvious to an external person. So it will take a little bit of time to take the actual number, the NPV number, whatever the decision-making criteria is, and tracing it back through all the tabs to the original assumptions and uh, uh, the formulas that are in the Excel file. So step number two, cleanse the file, understand the logic, the structure. Now, usually the structure is very simple. It goes assumptions or inputs, then it has a number of tabs on calculations, then it has some sort of output tabs. Um, either balance sheet, cash flow, uh, um, P&L, or um, a summary tab with all the outputs and all the NPV calculations, RR calculations. Uh, sometimes the tabs, uh, they, there's also a tab called sensitivity where different scenarios uh, are tested. So you have to understand the kind of the overall logic of, of the model. That's step number two. Step number three, identify based on your understanding of the model, identify all the key management assumptions. Identify all the assumptions made by the person who's preparing that model. The growth rates, in inflations, uh, foreign exchange, um, forecasted uh, uh, demand, so costs, cost of supply of goods, and all the other you know, dozens of assumptions that have to be included in the, in the future risk analysis. So that's step number three, identify all the assumptions. Those are um, your risks that you will be working with. So step number four is perform um, your kind of your typical risk identification in case the assumptions don't capture all of the most significant risks that the organization, or that, that, sorry, the, the organization, but this investment project is going to face, you will have to identify what um, missing risks are and either include them in the model or make it very explicit that in your risk analysis certain assumptions, certain risks have not been modeled, they have been excluded and you have to make it very obvious in, your, in all your presentations. So that's step number four. Do a risk identification and make adjustments to the model to make sure risks are adequately reflected. Now, the uh, step number five is you have to take all of those assumptions and change the single point estimates with distributions, with a with range, with a, norm, with a distribution that you feel is appropriate for that type of assumption. Uh, log normal, path, triangular, um, normal, unlikely, um, and literally any other distribution that you think fits uh, historical data or the forecasted uh, performance of that, that assumption. Equally as important, you have to identify any correlations between variables and you have to make them explicit, uh, usually in the software that uh, you use. By the way, give model risk a try because they've now made one of their basic versions completely free and that means you now have access to proper Monte Carlo modeling software that adds on to normal Excel or Microsoft project and, and you, can, you, can use it, uh, you can use it for free. And the, fu the basic functionality is more than enough for simple investment type analysis uh, calculations. So step number five, change all the assumptions from single values to ranges, add distributions, add correlations. 
step number six is run simulation scenario. Run 5,000, 10,000, it's entirely up to you, 50,000, whatever you, whatever you feel is appropriate. Run scenarios, run the simulation and see how changes in those assumptions, in those variables will impact on the actual project attractiveness. On the NPV or, or IRR, how will that change? Um, well, you know, we've used fair value. The output could be literally anything that is important. And then you will have a lot of ammunition to make judgments whether that investment proposal is a fair investment proposal, whether it will be a good investment project, whether it will be at risk, uh, what assumptions have to be either solidified or changed to increase the chances of achieving or exceeding the uh, objective set for that investment project. Now, the fundamental question, the biggest question in this whole process, and I mean, this is, I've just described to you the, the six, six steps, six steps, seven steps, putting the results distribution. These seven steps are essentially what us, me and my colleagues, are doing all the time when trying to apply risk analysis to the investment decision making. And we're able to say with that investment decision yeah, whether that investment proposal, it's not a decision yet, investment proposal is a good one or a bad one, whether adjustments need to be made to some of the assumptions in the legal documents, in the actual contract agreement or the deal agreement, um, whether the asset management team who will be responsible for, or the whatever the team is, that's responsible for implementing and working and operating that project after the investment decision has been made, what risks they need to take ownership of, and so on. So it gives a lot of very valuable ammunition. But the key question is, where do I get the ranges and the distributions for the data? Where do I get the ammunition to challenge the assumptions made by the investment? Because it's there working as you have it. Not really. Because but for most investment decisions, there is usually some sort of due diligence done. And those due diligence reports are an amazing source of information. Legal due diligence, due diligence, tax due diligence, financial due diligence, all of those due diligence reports that you receive, that the organization receives, um, they have to make their way to you. And by the way, some investment teams will be very reluctant to share those with the risk manager exactly for that reason, because a lot of real facts, a lot of real information, a lot of um, <laughs> compromising information is in those documents. So that's what we use to challenge management assumptions, to challenge the investment uh, deal team assumptions. We use the due diligence reports, plus we use any industry research that we can um, collect for that specific investment project, for that specific, uh, for that specific country, for that specific industry. Um, anything that a compliance team, based on their uh, personnel check or anti money laundering checks, ba based on whatever compliance checks they do, that information can be fed in into as well. So it, as much as we can kind of create as many as we can create different sources of information, that all helps. That really improves the value of our um, our investment risk analysis. The good news is, is that quite quickly you will realize what type of organization you're working in. Um, for example, I've worked in a number of organizations and sometimes I was, well, I don't know if it was lucky or unlucky, but I worked in an organization where most investment proposals were so unrealistically optimistic that adding just a small element of risk, adding just a couple of assumptions, modeling just a couple of assumptions, completely collapsed the whole proposal because they were just so unrealistic. There was complete fairy tales. Um, and it was very easy to do risk analysis on those because you just add a little bit of uh, facts to the fairy tale and the whole fairy tale just evaporates. Um, I worked also in an organization which was much more diligent and honest about the investment proposals and it was actually much more difficult to do risk analysis in, in those in those stages. So do do let me know um, how you apply that. Do let me know if you would take any other additional steps. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts right underneath this video. Make sure you subscribe to the Risk Academy channel for many, many more videos like that. See you in the next video.